Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of AM Minnesota. That, show, that song somewhat fits into our show today. Okay. Kim's looking at me like, <laughs> okay, how are you going to do this story? Well, here we go. Okay. This community was founded back in the Wild West days, 1800s, right? Okay. So there were, well, there's certainly Native Americans around Love here. the fur trader. At the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure there were a few cowboys. I'm sure you're right. And now we're coming full circle. It was circle. at least the spirit of that was definitely alive here with the idea of, you know, forging a new land and making things happen, absolutely. Yeah, and now look where we're at now, <laughs> and we're talking today about the vision for the future. Right, right, the Community Vision 2040, and this has been um, about a year-long process that the City of Faribault, primarily the City Council, has led, and the Chamber of Commerce has been involved in it kind of behind the scenes to help get people to meetings and encourage people to participate, and uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to host a few of the meetings in our offices and, and really bring what I would say the business community's view to the table. And I know that many people worked really, really hard on this community vision, and I'd say hats off to those that were really involved, certainly the city council, but they had a steering committee that led the way. Um, they were uh, very active. They were responsible for kind of setting the table for the community to come and share information. And I, we should mention their names, right? I mean, it's a great group of people, including Father Henry Doyle, Rod Gramsey, who's the chair of the board of the Chamber of Commerce this year. And so we were really happy to have him at that table to really represent the voice of business. Of course, our mayor, John Jasinski, Peggy Kylan, Tony Langerud, Jessica Lewis, Mike Ritchie, Tom Spooner, Steve Underdahl, Chad Wolf, and Troy Zvinsky. So sort of a, a really great group of community leaders that uh, led the process throughout the whole uh, year of effort, which involved a lot of different kinds of meetings. They had um, focus group meetings, uh, particular meetings that were by invitation only. They had um, surveys that you could take you know, from your computer or from your home, and they had a lot of community, uh, neighborhood, and uh, specific meetings uh, called Meeting in a Box, and that was a real unique way of getting involvement from a real broad group of people because anybody could host a Meeting in the Box, and they could bring their neighbors and friends, or they could bring people that belong to the same kind of club or the same special interest group and it added a lot of dimension to the material that they gathered to create the community vision. So that was pretty unique, and um, we really commend them for all that work. Kim Anderson is the president of the Faribault Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. Just noted their role in all this. You probably would like to invite people out to the KC Hall next week. Well, a community vision is really a, a huge undertaking, and, and the document itself has so much information in it and so much opportunity in it as well. So what we want to do is invite people to make this a document that comes to life and that there's action involved in it. And so we're hosting a meeting on uh, next Tuesday, June 9th at 11.30 at the Knights of Columbus Hall. And at that meeting, it will really be, hey, we have a mayor here. So we're going to actually have a expert. Just in like magic. That's yeah. awesome. I just heard you on the radio. Right, good. So we're going to have this uh, meeting where we're going to, the mayor and the city administrator will share the details of the vision document and some of the goals and specific initiatives that are going to be laid out in that document. And what we're hoping is that business leaders, community organization leaders, interested citizens will attend and it'll be their opportunity to raise their hand and say, I can help in this way, or our organization can be involved in that way. This is not a brainstorming meeting where we're trying to come up with new ideas. The ideas are in the document, and what we're trying to do is get people to take ownership of those ideas and make them come to life. All right, we'll get the mayor's take on all this in our next segment. And the, the city's best friend is the mayor, John Jasinski. Oh, that's nice, Gordy. Oh, you know, no. He's good. Once, uh, is, is the mayor you know, a cowboy? Once I'm in a blue moon, I, 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 I'm nice. <laughs> Once in a blue moon. <laughs> so, 
John, Mayor Jasinski, Gordy started the, yeah, the I ambulance. Heard the so yeah, I heard it. I heard it. Like, saying like, about yeah. cowboy. It's like, okay, so <laughs> trying to make that connection. Here comes cowboy. our cowboy. Here's I don't know how you're going to bring that circle around. I don't know either. <laughs> but anyway, we're glad to have you uh, join us, too, because you're really the expert on all of this, having led the way. And um, we're the chamber. Our role is to get people at that event uh, next Tuesday, June 9th, at the Knights of Columbus at the um, at 11:30, and it's a it's a lunch. But if people want to come and they really are not interested in um, paying the lunch fee, then they can come. But we do require our request uh, registration so we can be prepared. But if there's uh, people that would like to come and choose not to eat, there's no charge to attend and participate in the meeting. But the lunch, of course, there's a fee. So we'd ask people to give a call to the chamber at 334-4381 and sign up today if possible so that we can be ready by next week. Yeah, and you can do that online too, right? You can. You can go on the Chamber website, faribowmn.org, and uh, look for the event called State of the City, and click on that, and it's easy to register online. You know, you and the city administrator were on this very show not too long ago talking about the process, but maybe Correct. people didn't hear that program. Can you summarize how this all got started? Well, you know, actually it was brought to us, and we, you know, we haven't updated the comprehensive plan in 12 years, and as part of this, we thought this would be a good segue into that to really focus on what a, a we as a council and what does the, the community of Faribault want to see us in the next 25 years. Everybody kind of has an idea we should be into this or we should be into this, so actually getting the groups together and all coming up with a consolidated plan of what Faribault wants to be in the future, I think was smart. Uh, the council was obviously on board to get this done. We did hire a professional, Craig Rapp, to come in at a reasonably uh, low cost. You know, everybody always is concerned about you pay for these studies and they go on a shelf. Well. I'll guarantee you this this one's not going to go on the shelf. We've had some great active involvement. Uh, we've got Nick Stoman involved. We've gotten Dr. Parker from South Central involved. Uh, we've got some great business people involved. So I think the, the synergies of this group is really going to carry this forward and make sure this actions are carried out to uh, change what we want to see fairable in the future. Those are important people, of course, in the community. I guess my question is, did we go to other factions of the community and get their opinion? Absolutely. We've actually have been previewing this. We've, we've uh, went over this with the county. We've talked to the school district, and both of those entities are, are extremely happy with what, what we've done and what, what the outcomes of it and the focus it gives us to move on in the future. Uh, we've also met with the chamber and the chamber group, and we've you know just before we unveiled this whole thing, we really wanted to bounce it off a few people to make sure the key players were they were seeing the same thing that we were. And, and it really, it's very good at you know I think what. It typically, or as much as me as the mayor thinking, what, what does this community want? To have that uh, certified by the citizens that yes, that's really what they want. You know, you always think in your mind what Fairbo needs and what we should be doing, but to hear it from the community and these focus groups and being in a box and things like this to really, you know, verify that this really is where we should be headed in the future is what really helps us as a council to move forward. Yeah, what I'm thinking is we're growing diverse, you know, right. a diverse community. Did that segment of the population? Absolutely. You know, again, I think 25 years ago they said we're roughly 2% diverse in the city of Faribault, and now I think we're 26 or 28% diverse. It's one of the largest growths of diversity in the state of Minnesota. So uh, something obviously has came up, and we've talked about that, and trying to see, you know, the you know the things we can do to help that population and what we can do, and to, for people to understand that, that the population of Faribault is the big thing. Yeah. I think that too, uh, Gordy, the the effort that the council made to engage that population and some maybe some of the less obvious voices uh, in this process was really commendable as well. Um, it's pretty easy to get chamber members together, school board members, county commissioners, that kind of thing. But the, with the consultants' help, there was very specific effort to get youth, high school age kids involved to say, what, what do we want out of this in the years to come? Um, also. Latino and Somali community members that may not necessarily feel like, gosh, that's a meeting I'm going to go to. You know, I want to be part of the future of our community. They may not feel that that's a meeting they co would be comfortable going to. So there was specific effort to reach out to them in areas where they would be comfortable sharing their ideas. So I think that's really good. Um, we do know in the in the vision um, statement that or the document, I'm not sure exactly how you're referring to it, that the issue of our growing diversity is a kind of an underlying uh, message in it. There's not, there's not a specific goal around it, but it's understood, I believe, and I've heard members of the task force talk, or the steering committee talk about 
how that has to uh, be kind of part of many of the goals that are that are laid out by the uh, city council and others so that that um, population is fully engaged in in what our community is going to be. Does this produce a vision statement per se? Well, I think it's a vision paragraph. I don't have it here right in front of me, but you know, we we've spent one whole meeting on trying to get this vision from you know one and a half pages down to a paragraph, down to you know it's it's not a tagline. It's it's not going to be that. It's more of a you know, here's what the concentration we are, and that was drafted. And I think Kim has it here in front of us, and she can go through, or she can talk about it, or either one of us can. Uh, but the community vision, uh, small town pride, big city pride. Big city opportunities, obviously you see that in our, in our banners downtown, that's something we always wanted to keep because we think that is a true statement of what Faribault is. Uh, but Faribault's, what it, I'll read it, is Faribault is one of America's best small communities, a place where all people find opportunities to succeed, grow, and prosper. We celebrate our unique strengths in education, business, industry, medical, nature, recreation, leisure, and the arts and we are proud of our historic downtown and iconic institutions. As a community, we embrace the future and plan for a positive change through our commitment to innovation and excellence, making Faribault an outstanding place to live, work, grow, invest, and visit. So that, that is the community vision that we've come up with, and again, many hours and meetings of trying to get that down to what we can you know, make it so people would stay stay focused on and uh, not get into a page and a half document so this really is what we're we believe we're all about right. I think it's important too that you know John mentions it's not a tagline this is a deeper than that it's not a marketing statement it's really about a statement that organizations like the Chamber like the EDA like the Planning Commission can use as a filter for decisions that they make um, hopefully it'll it'll serve as a mission statement or a vision statement where those kinds of organizations would be able to say okay we have a challenging decision in front of us which decision leads us closer to making this vision a reality how can we move forward closer to our vision and uh, it'll give people a, a filter through which to work that will uh, help make decisions and and also give council I don't know how to put it exactly, but it'll, but give them some support when they have tough decisions to make, because there are tough decisions ahead, and we have to uh, give the council the support and encouragement to make those tough decisions if we want positive change to occur, and we we can't just be um, on the sidelines throwing spitballs and pot shots at the community leaders. We have to provide a lot of support and be there to say thank you for the courage of strong leadership. Geez, I've never been at a council meeting where they had spitballs. You know. But no, I, you never know. Never know. Behind the scenes. No. <laughs> I think just you know, Corey, the the whole thing of, of really maintaining a positive attitude of what what we want to what we want to do in Fairwell, I think, is a big thing. A lot of times, you know, and I think it probably happens in a lot of small towns. You get that negativity, and everybody's kind of throwing shots at the, why are they doing this, why are they doing this. Well, you always get compared to your neighbors. You yeah, know correct. That. Yeah, we do that. But I, I think just to maintain this positive attitude, and let's let's see Fairwell the way we want it in the future, and and some of the, some of the things that came out of this community vision is the citizens of Fairwell kind of have a. Uh, a lesser feel about themselves than we should the neighboring communities. We need to have more of a positive, uh, good feel about our community. And uh, you know, we talked, you know, quite a bit about that in our last segment. But I mean, it, that's really the thing we need to do is be positive about our town, uh, make it better place, and, and you know, not be negative about the little things that aren't right for a certain person. I think we really want to go forward and make it a great place. Yeah. Well, it is a great place. You know that, Kim? Well, yeah. there How many years? John's been here practically his whole life. You know, we do know that. We know that it's a beautiful community and that there's a lot of resources and that it's a source of pride. But John is right in that a lot of times we compare ourselves unfavorably or we have a little bit of an inferiority complex and we shouldn't. And what we find is that people who will move here or visit here see all the beauty and all the opportunity and all the possibilities. And a lot of times, um, and maybe this is common in many communities too, but it's, you know, we need to sell ourselves to our own community too. We need to sell ourselves to the people that have been here forever and remind them of the rich history we have and the amazing education opportunities and all the wonderful institutions here, as well as the new business and new investment that is always on the horizon. There's just a lot 
of positive things in the community and we need to, um, and like the Daily News is doing right now, doing uh, uh, kind of the good stuff going on, kind of, and you do every day on this program, talk about the great things that are going on in the community. So as we look at this vision statement, it gives us a lot of opportunities to be proud of our community as well as think about what the next generation of people might be wanting or what they see as opportunities going forward. The world's changing. It's changed a lot in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. It'll change a lot more in the next quarter century, I would guess. Did the consultant come up with a 25-year time frame or did you guys want to do that? Uh, we're doing that. We're putting an action plan together. We actually have short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals. So we're kind of prioritizing all because again, it doesn't happen overnight. So you have to work on some things that are that are really you know, some of the citizens are, are concerned about right now, and then you know work through that to get to the long-term goal, what, what we want to be. And again, I, I just returned from Germany. Was very fortunate to come back from Germany, and you know you really realize Fairwell really has a lot to offer. But we do, as, as leaders, have to understand that you know we can do things a little bit better or get a little idea here and there and, and use those things to make us better. I think we always need to continuously to be to try and be better. And I think you know our trip, and I thank the citizens of Fairwell for letting us go on that and see some of the things that we could you know tweak a little bit, and make a little bit better, and be a little bit better at. And and I you know they do a good job over there. It's a whole different culture in in, in Europe as well. But I think bringing some small little things back can really help us. You know use what we have to go to the next level. Well, I don't know. They brought us roundabouts, and I'm not a fan well, of Cody, <laughs> that's so funny. Well, there's a lot of, okay, good and bad and everything, right? You know, if I would say this old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix, don't it. fix it. Well, I read an article just yesterday about the need to turn that idea on its head, because today, with the speed of change in, in everyone's lives, with the speed of growth and, and the changes that so many organizations and communities are going through, we have to we have to disregard that old thing and say, if it's not broke, improve it. And so many things in this community are wonderful, but we can't rest on that. We That's can't right. say, well, leave it alone, there's nothing wrong. We have to look at, okay, what will make that even better five years from now or ten years from now? And it isn't a sprint, it's a mm -hmm. marathon. So we're, we know that we have to do small things bit by bit and you know incremental change is what it's going to take and uh, I really commend the council for all their work on that and um, I'm going to have to slip out the door and give the rest of the program over to Mayor Jasinski to talk maybe about some of the uh, values the community values that the council selected as well as the strategic priorities and and recalling that this didn't come just from the council members it came from lots and lots of participation and that participation uh, continues because the council can't make this happen. This isn't a government vision. This is a community vision. And so we need community members to join in the effort to make it a reality. And again, I'll invite people to come to that luncheon on Tuesday of next week, June 9th, and it's at 1130. And um, we invite you to call the chamber or check the chamber website to get signed up today because uh, it's just a, less than a week away and we need to lock in our plans. Yeah, get a meal count and all of those things. Find yeah. out how many people are coming. So thanks for having me, Gordy, and you thank bet. you, Mayor Jasinski, for following up and taking care of all this work and completing the program on my behalf. Well, <laughs> thanks you, Kim. Again, the Chamber's been uh, you know, involved in this kind of behind the scenes, but again, what the staff does and the, the uh, organization skills they have behind the scenes and doing this and putting these events together is, is tremendous. So again, hats off to you, Kim, and the Chamber staff to do a great job at that. Yeah, well, thanks. We appreciate the president of the chamber coming in, Kim Anderson. Thanks for being with us today, All right, Kim. thanks. I'll be listening. All right. right. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Mayor Jasinski, uh, I thought Kim worded this perfectly when she called it. It's not a vision of government. This is a vision of a community, so we need to embrace this. Yep, and that's why we wanted people to get involved. We want you know people to show up at this meeting as well. And now you know now comes the tough part. We can all come up with these ideas, but now we have to put those plans into action. And a lot of times that takes money and involvement and, and uh, risk and you know doing all these things to try and get things rolling in the community. So we're looking forward to getting people here and listening to what we have to say, and uh, getting people to put out their hands and say, okay, I'm ready to help. So that's what we need. Can you highlight some of the highlights of the visioning? Well, you know, uh, there was, you know, there's community values, and I think we went over this last show, but, you know, sense of our community, are, that's a big thing here in Fairwood. What's the sense of community? It's a sense of kind of a small being, small town, but pride, um, sense of place. Those kind of two kind of run together. Like uh, most communities, 
this is my opinion. Like most communities that are our size or smaller, you you probably find people want to keep it that way, yeah, but correct. they still want to grow. Correct. Yeah, we want to we want to grow our economic base. I think is the big thing that makes us better. We get, you know, we get better services because we have more money that comes in in tax base. We have better schools because you have more students going to those schools. So all the things that people want, we have to continue to try and strive for. But they also want that small town feel. And sometimes that is a balancing act because you have to do that. But I, you know, one of our big things in the third one in here is opportunity. With our location, with the metro, how close we are is a, is a huge opportunity for us, and as well as being on Interstate 35. I won't name the other communities that are close by there that aren't on 35, but really the importance of being on 35 really helps these things with just all kinds of accessibility and those things. So I think that's another thing. Innovation, you know, one of the things we do, we try and do well. We have a lot of innovation here in town with Sage Glass and some of those things. We have a lot of uh, diverse manufacturing companies. So we offer, it's not a small town. Sometimes they're based on one big manufacturing company, something like that. The economy goes down and something happens to that company. The whole town is, you know, struggles. But in, in Faribault, we have such such a diverse uh, group of manufacturing facilities and from the sage to the Faribault Foods to the woolen mills to just so many different things going on in the academies and, and the uh, uh, correctional facility. We just have so many things which I think is a great thing for our, that. And then excellence. I think what we've decided through this whole process is if we're going to do something, we want to do it right. We want to do, do it very well. So I think we need to strive to do that to be the best at what we're going to try and do. The best we can possibly be. Yep, correct. 25 years down the road. Now, I don't know how old you are, John. 49. Well, I'll be 49, Gordy, in a couple weeks. But I uh, I know in 25 years I'll be a very old man. <laughs> you know, well, I will too. So. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be uh, let me see, roughly 50. So I'll be about 75, and I know you'll be a little bit older. Now, that doesn't mean that we still shouldn't have the vision. That's not what I'm saying. But obviously, your demographic report shows, well, I don't have any hair. But you're going to have a lot grayer hair yep. in 25 years, and there'll be a lot of gray hairs here. How does that impact our community? Well, and we actually have a little bit slightly different demographics in the state because we have That's the true. young population right. from the diverse communities here. So we, you know, we're going to have a steady population. But the, you know, the, the citizens are getting older. We have a, a, a bigger retired population that's coming. So some of the housing issues we're going to have, and the you know apartments and things we want, all those things we have to take into consideration. And again, also going back to this plan, it is a 25-year plan, but we as a council will look at it every year just to make sure we're on track and it's up to date. And this isn't just a, you know, it's set in stone. We want to make sure that we're, you know, changing this as we go to make sure that we're looking at all the things that may affect us. So do you have goals in different areas? For example, infrastructure. Is there a yes. goal? Yep. So we have all kinds of, there's, a, you know, several pages of, of short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals on all those issues with infrastructure and schools and downtown and all kinds of different things. So for example, can we ever <laughs> get that exchange on the south end to go both ways? Well, we, we looked at it a little bit, and you know, there, that's always in play, but you know, getting MnDOT dollars for that is always not the easiest, and you know, there's also, as industry grows to the north, I think, you know, that's the way we're going to grow because the metro is to our, to our north. That's kind of kind of the logical way we'll grow for industry and things like that. We've always talked about a County Road 9 interchange, and with the more and more industries that come into town, the, all these, the sages and those things, uh, the more we have traffic there, we'll be able to do that. So, so you think that'll come before a south? I would think, to be honest, Gordy, I think the the biggest thing that we would see from what I've seen this is is the north side of Faribault, correct? That's just you don't see that very often. One no, side, correct? Yes, there's a few unique ones. There's they're around though, but uh, you know we've looked at that and you know it's a min dot thing. It's the, the cost of that and what you all have to do out there. But and what are some of the other specifics in terms of the vision process? You talk about you know the fire and police departments. We look at all those. You know, I think one of the big things, and I've said on the last show, is, is our downtown. You know, I think that's one thing that's come up, and one of our things is a vibrant downtown. It, you know, you want a vibrant downtown for many reasons. So if a, an industry from someone's looking at locating in Faribault and they're looking at putting their employees here in town, you know, they're going to drive downtown and get that feel. And as I said in the last show, they want that nice feel or that good feel downtown. And, you know, as retail has changed over the last 25 years, we need to look at what we can do with downtown. And we have some great ideas on, you know, possibilities of a museum district downtown, some of the, you know, the history that we have here in town. Uh, we've also talked with uh, Nick Stoneman from Shattuck and maybe possibly putting some of their faculty housing downtown. We've talked with Dr. Parker from South Central College about possibility of some student housing downtown. I think what happened years ago is that, you know, the, the lower, in, lower end housing has become, you know, uh, pretty popular downtown, and I think that's something that has a negative impact. So I think if we can 
uh, bring that uh, upper scale housing to downtown and try and do some neat things downtown. That will help in the whole the whole roundabout things of getting more industry to town. In 25 years, you may not have storefronts. You might have everything online business wise. Correct. Yeah. There's you know what I'm saying? Correct. Yeah. And, and even now, there's you know mostly of our businesses downtown are service related. They're not so much retail anymore. Although we do have some of those. And I think you always have some facet of that. The the antique shops and things like that. But yes, as as you know, times have changed. It's more and more online and eBay and Craigslist and all those things and yeah, so it's we have to reinvent our downtown and to make it something that will uh, be vibrant. So, what was your biggest take out of this? I think the downtown, as I said last time, I think we really, I think really people are, are you know have a have a desire to see downtown vibrant, and you know we're seeing some of those things now with the new brewery, the F Town Brewery, which is going to open up here. I think they told me just around July 4th or just slightly after July 4th, they're licensed now to make beer. Uh, so they're going to start, you know, doing that, and they're getting their little pub room. Uh, Will we get done. to taste it maybe during Heritage Days or something? Uh, or oh, you said July fourth. July fourth, no. Maybe during. The they're going to be, you know, I have them the mayor's reception as well at Alexander's this year on June eighteenth, and we can maybe do a show about, you know, what's going on there. Yeah. But I'd like to focus on some of the downtown things that are happening. We'll be putting the new Tilted World, uh, or the old Tilted World cart yeah. down in front of Burkitt's Myers. Refurbish. So Refurbish. We're going to put that uh, uh, on the block right in front of Burkitt's Myers. Uh, the F-Town Brewery guys will be there and they'll be talking about a little bit about what they're doing in their business. Now we got a couple other businesses that are coming in downtown. The furniture uh, making uh, uh, company that's locating on the 200 block. There's just, you know, we're starting to see some turn in, in the downtown after the recovery from the economy back in the 2010-11. So it's yeah, exciting. And you could have another, you know, dip too. Yep. That's the way the economy works. So that all has to be factored in. Yep. Well, thanks for coming in. I'm sure you'd like to see a lot of people at KC Hall on Tuesday. We would. That would be great. Thanks. And we a lot of, you know, get people engaged. We always talk about what you want to do, but you really need the citizens to get engaged. It's being billed as the state of the city address. Yep, so we'll do both. And I'll, again, I'll talk I hope about something. Have you got that written? Have you got that written? No, I haven't started that yet. Uh oh. Better get at it. <laughs> but I will by next Tuesday. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Gordy. Mayor John Chesinski, our guest this morning on AM Minnesota, along with President of the Faribourg Chamber of Commerce and Tourism, Kim Anderson. We thank her for stopping by.